Okay, uh, so this is James Anthony McIntyre. He's here on case number 2024-CF92836AO. And Mr. Yurick, can I get you to put your name on the record for me? Good afternoon, Your Honor. May it please the court. Hal Yurick here on behalf of Mr. McIntyre. I had the opportunity a few moments ago to speak with the state. And if I could, uh, there's seven charges here, which is pretty good for a 29-line affidavit. That's one charge for every four lines. Pretty good. The, the line that was missing is the line that was hopefully going to tell us that a body cam was involved. But I guess the sheriff can afford a helicopter, but not a body cam. So we don't have that, apparently. In any event, uh, as to the charges, the charge which has the highest listed bond is, uh, let's see if I find a statute number here, is a uh, 838-021. It's a $10,000 bond. That offense comes in three flavors. There's the second degree felony, which apparently the law enforcement officer preferred. There's a third degree felony version, and there's a first degree misdemeanor version. The state has agreed not to object to my request that for bond purposes, they'll make their own charging decision. For bond purposes, we can treat that offense as if it were a misdemeanor. Okay. Instead of a $10,000 second degree felony. Okay. Uh, you've had the opportunity to read the affidavit and uh, perhaps I'm being gratuitous to describe it as aggravated uh, disorderly intoxication. It's a little more than that. We have, and they certainly have the right to charge battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting with violence as two counts, but it was one act. So I'm going to respectfully request, subject to your honor's discretion and any objection from the state, uh, bonds as follows. Battery on a law enforcement officer, uh, which is currently set at no bond, I'm going to ask for $2,500. Threatening a public servant is the one we discussed to treat as a misdemeanor. I'm going to ask for $100. Resisting an officer with violence, I'm going to ask for $500. Battery on a 65-year-old person who didn't want to press charges, $500. Disorderly intoxication, $100. Resisting an officer without violence, $100. And I've only been at this for 58 years. I'm sorry, 59 in May. Uh, and I've never seen a sanitary nuisance for spitting in a police car when, as soon as you got to the jail, they had to take you to the hospital. But anyhow, I'd ask for $100 on that one, too. Okay. Does the state have any objection to those bond amounts? Uh, Your Honor, I would leave that up to your honest discretion regarding any of the bond amounts. I would just want to say I do concur with uh, defense that the charge threatening a public servant does seem more like the misdemeanor and that is why I did not object to uh, that bond amount being determined by your honor. Um, okay, so. <laughs> okay, so I will go ahead and agree with the defense that we can keep the bond set at 2,500 on count one, 100 on count two, 500 on count three, 500 on count four, 100 on count five, 100 on count six, and 100 on count seven. I will also note that I don't show that Mr. McIntyre has any prior criminal history. Um, and we'll put that he's going to hire his own attorney. Uh, and you're all set. Thank you, Your Honor. That's okay. all I've got this morning. Uh, you'll get out sometime today. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much. I guess so you're going to let me out this way. But yes. <laughs> Have a great day, Your Honor. You too. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Yoshi. You're here on, this is Daisha Marshall Henderson. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, Raj and Joshi. On behalf of Ms. Henderson, Your Honor, um, I do have arguments on the probable cause. Okay. What would you like to tell me? Your Honor. Um, Can I just do one thing? Let me just put the case number on. It's 2024-CF9249-AO. And go ahead, Mr. Joshi. Your Honor, um, Ms. Henderson is being uh, charged, overcharged, with attempted second-degree murder. And according to uh, Florida Statute uh, 782.04, subsection 2, uh, and I'm going to um, 7.4 of the jury instructions, uh, for a depraved mind, it requires it be done with ill will, hatred, spite, or evil intent. And according to the arrest affidavit in this case, um, the victim was extremely aggressive, not only to um, the uh, 
uh, party that Ms. Henderson was at, but to other um, individuals, even hit another lady, and was starting an altercation. In the arrest affidavit, uh, Ms. Henderson, at one point, uh, was trying to defuse the situation and separate um, her party from this person who was uh, extremely violent, who even got attacked after he got stabbed by other people, um, by her separating it and then the aggressor continuing to go after other members in her party, um, that does not show ill will, hatred, spite, or evil intent. If anything happened, at most, these allegations uh, equate to an aggravated battery, not to an attempted murder. There's no allegation she knew the alleged victim or there was any um, prior hatred or animosity between them. This was uh, an altercation that seems to have happened um, all at once. Um, even if something had happened to the victim, at most it would be a manslaughter, which would be a second degree felony. So according to the facts in this case, um, it doesn't equate to uh, a second-degree murder, hypothetically, if the person passed away, and it can't be attempted second-degree murder. Um, in addition, the uh, probable cause in this case um, doesn't show any witness saying that they saw Ms. Henderson stab the alleged victim or that she was involved in the altercation as far as um, anything physical. The only thing that the police report shows is that the police officer in the last paragraph says that somebody wearing the same clothing description as Ms. Henderson was the person who was involved and the clothes that she um, had matched that there was some type of um, fight or altercation and you know there was blood but there was blood everywhere. So based on that and based on the uh, uh, arrest affidavit, I think this is grossly overcharged. Um, in addition, I would even argue that there is lack of probable cause on the possession of a weapon by a convicted felon. Um, the only evidence that, uh, that uh, uh, it says uh, the charge of, uh, on the last sentence, it says the charge of a weapon by a convicted felon is further substantiated by her prior adjudication uh, of guilt in Pinellas County reference, and it references the case number with the CF number. But as this honorable court knows, you know, somebody can plead guilty to a CF case number and plead, and it be a misdemeanor. Um, there's nothing in this affidavit that indicates that she pled to an actual felony. So based on that, I would respectfully ask this court to find there's no probable cause for the first count. If the court wants to find a bond amount, I would say it's more indicative um, of an aggravated battery, but I still think there's probable cause on the identity because nobody identifies her. The victim doesn't identify her. There's no photo spread lineup. There's no victim that says that she stabbed um, the alleged uh, um, victim. And uh, But if, if the court wants to find a bond amount, find it more um, in line with an aggravated battery, and I would say there's no uh, probable cause for count two. Did the state wish to respond? Yes, Your Honor. I would disagree with the uh, defense's uh, statements of what occurred. None of the victims, well, none of the witnesses provided, and the defendant did not provide a statement of what occurred regarding anything uh, that happened prior to the incident. Uh, however, the lead officer did observe a video, and on that, and he states in his report, he observed the defendant stab the victim multiple times in the abdomen. Uh, this is on video. Additionally, the victim was, had to be taken to our ORMC and placed into surgery the, uh, because of a laceration to his abdomen. The uh, officer also describes uh, puddles of blood all over. Uh, given this, state believes there is probable cause that the defendant did uh, commit the time of attempted second degree murder. Additionally, based off of just the four corners of the affidavit, the officer does say that she has a conviction which makes her a uh, convicted felon and this is a uh, CF felony case number. Uh, based off of that, there should be probable cause found. Additionally, state would be moving for a 
Crete out of detention under uh, Floyd uh, Section 907.041, uh, Section 5D, as this is a dangerous enumerated crime and there is probable cause to uh, that she committed the crime. And so the state would be asking that she be held on zero bond pending a, uh, a pretrial detention hearing. Your Honor, if I may respond. Yes, sir. Um, as far as second degree murder, it requires ill will, spite, evil intent. And there is no evidence of that. Um, you know, the case law is when, you know, there's sudden provocation, that's a manslaughter. That, that's, that's what we have manslaughter for. The state, nothing on the four corners indicates that there's any of that. Um, and, you know, it is required for a depraved mind. It be done with ill will, hatred, spite, or evil intent. Um, that's the law. And it, it is, there's nothing in the affidavit that shows that, says anything that she made any statements. Um, it was uh, an altercation, and if anything, she would be almost justified. There, there is a justifiable defense in this. Whoever did the stabbing, this person was aggressive. He's a male. He's attacking females. He's already hit another female. Uh, after he fell down, other individuals who weren't involved in her party attacked this individual. So not only is there not probable cause for um, second degree uh, murder, which is the state's burden, there's also a justifiable um, issue over here. And the only thing that the officer said um, as far as identifying her was through the clothes. Um, and it says it right here. It, it says, um, Henderson is later located during a traffic stop wearing the same clothes as a suspect uh, in the surveillance video. He doesn't say anyone identified her um, or that it was the same height, weight, um, individual race, anything, just same clothes. That is not an identification based on the four corners of the affidavit that could substantiate these type of charges and holding somebody uh, with no bond. Okay, um, Ms. Henderson, um, you've hired an excellent attorney who's done an, a really wonderful job in arguing for you. The problem is, is that probable cause is such a very low standard that um, you know, he makes some great things that I think will do well for a stand your ground motion or possibly motions to suppress. But I, I do think there's enough based on um, the video surveillance. Uh, that's the problem with things these days. We don't really need witnesses anymore because we got cameras everywhere. So it does indicate that um, she's in an altercation with several females. Um, and then it says that I mean, he basically says that she places her right hand into her front right pocket. She can be seen manipulating something in her front right pocket. Uh, she attacks Lewis and makes a stabbing motion, I believe four to five times stabbing motions. And then he falls to the ground and he's, lo and hold, been stabbed. Um, so I, I do think for the very low burden of probable cause, it does, it does get to that level. Um, unfortunately, under the state statute, since January 1st, the state does have the right to request the pretrial detention hearing. Um, I can tell you that that hearing will be on Friday, July 12th at 8.30, um, and that's in courtroom 6A and 6A. Um, I do think she is entitled to a bond on count two. I don't know at this point how helpful that is, but I will give her a $1,000 bond on that. The only thing I ask that while she's being detained is that she have no contact with um, the alleged victim or any of the, well, I don't, if I'm reading this correct, was she the only one that got arrested? Yes, Your Honor, if, if I'm understanding. And I'll just leave it like that. Thank you. Okay. Good luck, Ms. Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Joshi. Thank you, Your Honor. It's a pleasure seeing you. Good to see you, too. Thank you. Just no contact.